meaning if someone raped your granddaughter and then raped your daughter and then is coming for your mother and there's nothing you can do about it and this is really important to you assuming you actually care about them you will st feel helpless and hatred and if it's really important to you maybe 80 percent of you will will be filled with hatred because you are rebelling against a system of power that allows something so important to you to be violated and if and every single witness that stands by and does nothing you will destroy that system as well abuse survivors blame the passive witnesses more than the perpetrator in many cases because they understood that someone else could have stopped it mom could have done something when dad was molesting me the neighbor could have actually helped rather than walked away the bystanders on the street that got out their camera and videoed the rape they could have stopped the rape and the hatred is often directed at the at the silent witness because they represent the cult system that bred the phenomena you don't get sociopathic phenomena in an empathic cult for there to be sociopathic individuals behaving sociopathically it takes an incredible amount of cult collusion to breed a sociopath because it's not fun to be a sociopath anyone who can flip a switch between being safe loved happy in an empathic cult or traumatized into a sociopathic state and behaving sociopathically understands that being empathic and loving is far more fun so why are they doing it they weren't given the choice a deep level of cult sanctioned violation bred a percentage of sociopathic people within the environment of the cult a sociopathic cult is the only environment capable of raising and producing a distinct percentage of sociopathic people it is not preferable no one chooses that when they have both options so the so the problem is with the system the witnesses that stand by and do nothing are a reflection of that system which is why as i say abuse survivors are angriest at the silent witnesses who didn't do anything because it you have to breed a level of cowardice from sustained violation in an environment where it did not do any good to do something before you get passive witnesses and there's a rage at the system that creates that so this is very important to know no phenomena created in the body created in the heart created in the mind just disappears on its own it's the end of an equation so if you're stuck in hate because the environment produced hate and the, the thermometer of the biology of the body and the human heart said here's the product here's the byproduct of this happening this happening and this happening that hate will erode and corrode the system that created it until it is transformed healed and integrated it will do that your hate towards yourself most victims blame themselves will corrode the sense of self until it is integrated and learned from all 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 totals are a symptom of the equation that produced the total and the psyche is real if you have four you got there somewhere two plus two one plus one plus one plus one seven minus three but something happened to produce four and you don't get out of four without changing a variable you don't bury the four if you do it'll come back to haunt you it'll keep rising from the grave even if it's in granddaughters wanting to kill themselves jumping into furnaces because the family is not doing with the work to deal with the grief in its family equation 
So this is, this is going on at any given point. I also want to talk about the game and what, what the purpose is, which is that our purpose, our game, as conscious egos, is to continually move in this direction towards the infinite feminine unconscious, not by forgetting all systems and not bothering to learn them, but by starting off with as complex a system as we are capable of dealing with, learning about its flaws, updating the system, learning about those flaws, updating the system, learning about those flaws, updating the system until there is less and less difference between our map of reality and actual reality. And as we do so, we move towards grace, we, we move towards beauty, truth, and goodness. We move towards the divine. The divine is the whole self that we forget when we come into the small self and start developing crude heuristic models in the paradigm of the individual. That's the game. And pain is not the enemy, it is the teacher. Every single one of these lines in the system is a part of ourselves severed from a part of ourselves in an ecological framework that we fail to grasp. And the pain that we feel is our own. And it is a teacher that is a direction. It's an infinite continuum. As we heal the big wounds, subtle wounds, we, we become more sensitive. As we become more sensitive, subtle wounds become conscious. As we heal the subtle wounds, we become more sensitive. As we become more sensitive, even subtler wounds come to consciousness. In an ongoing process that ultimately restores us with the ultimate healing of death, the releasing of the partition of the conscious mind from the unconscious mind. And we understand that whatever role we played in the journey was part of a larger dance of balancing, a larger dance in which there is no evil as we think of it. Because the bits that are seeking revenge and trying to destroy the system that excluded it are the allies of the energy trapped in the system. Because the system is the problem. The structure is the problem, not the energy particles in or outside the structure. And the structure has to be knocked down. We just have, there's this balance between evolving it and, just, and eliminating it. Because it's just too big to go to complete unconsciousness. So there's a process of, of evolutionary and, you know, and, and so a lot of the tension between human beings is just around the pace of change. Because if change happens too fast for some people, they can't keep up. So then they are excluded from the new evolving system. Like the people who can't start tapping with their thumbs, suddenly they don't want the world to change because they're excluded. If they can't text, now they don't exist. Nobody wants to answer the phone. So they don't want a world like this because they can't be included. Now, forgiving, I wanted to talk a little bit about forgiving because pain is the friend and the teacher of an evolving system, as is pleasure. Because you have well-being as a symptom that you're going in the right direction. You have pain as a symptom you're in the wrong direction. And it's a maze-like shape. And so sometimes you have to understand the full system. And so the teaching is ecological well-being. And so in a maze, if you're walking a maze, you often go away from the center of the circle just before you go to the center. And this is the, the, the wisdom of ecological thinking. And so sometimes you have to face death to be born. You have to go into your deepest pain right before you open up to deep healing. So it's not a lineal process of seeking, of being guided by well-being. There needs to be a sense of vision. 
If you just follow the myopia of the moment, you would all become cocaine addicts and then kill yourself with overdoses as hedonic adaptation required more and more to maintain the same level of pleasure um, and, you know, you go bankrupt. I also just want to talk about asymmetry and symmetry in a system because in this system you have a pretty good level of inclusion but every part of this is the shadow of the system and will seek to destroy the system but you've included a strong majority it's not going to be incredibly violent to drive in that wheel um, but then you have the relationship reinforcement patterns. So this part has a connection to this, 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 and this, but this part is isolated. And so you also have the sophistication of geometry in terms of this is a more robust system where every point is equally connected structurally. If you imagined a sphere that had metal brackets bolted equally to each point, this sphere would not collapse. This sphere is vulnerable to collapsing on its side. And the, the, what I want to illustrate is the difference between shared ownership, which is a feminine principle, and scapegoating, which is a chauvinistic masculine principle. Chauvinistic masculine uh, stupidity seeks to blame one part of the system for the problems created by the entire paradigm of the system, by everyone adopting and failing to deal with those problems, by the willful blindness of the majority, and by witnesses that are saying it's not my fault, it's not my problem, and letting the system collapse. So in a chauvinistic abuse system, all kinds of horrific things are going on, and everyone's saying it's not my fault, it's not my problem, and ignoring them as the entire system collapses. And then as this creates pain in an unsophisticated system, scapegoats are, fought, are sought to be blamed. So a scapegoat is a weak geometric pattern where a small minority is blamed for the problems created and allowed by everyone. Creating something masculine principle, allowing something feminine principle. So in a chauvinistic paradigm, if you create something, that matters. But if you allow, that doesn't matter. And there's some interesting debates, you know, where in uh, Richmond, when a woman was being raped and a crowd of people gathered around the rape and videoed it on their phones, they were using the chauvinistic paradigm of saying, well, I didn't, I didn't cause the rape. I only allowed it. Now, within chauvinism, this makes sense because to allow something is feminine, it's nothing. It's meaningless. I have no responsibility for allowing something. But if I caused it masculine, then that's important. But you cannot have something without an equal degree of causing and allowing. You need a much bigger majority to allow something than you need to cause something. And the majority has the power. So if you deny the majority's responsibility to allow or not to allow something, for example, in America, there are millions of homeless people, and a majority of people are allowing it. If they didn't allow it, if they said, not in my town, and there was a march on the city hall, and what are we going to do, and we're not going to let the mayor into their office until we agree to take care of our people, they wouldn't be homeless. It's very easy to solve, by the way. There's no homeless in Thailand. It's not a money issue. It's a value issue. And so um, we allow things, and that's fine. We allow scapegoating. And as long as it's not us, it's fine with us. So, But you, every system is equally created by allowing and causing, and one could argue that allowing is the bigger problem because the majority always has the largest mass, and if the majority will not put up with something, it stops because the power is in the majority. And the minority will not violate the majority if they have to experience the pain of their own violation. A sociopath will pick on a victim as long as 
it's a weaker one. You know, a bully looks for someone weak who won't fight back. Because a bully doesn't want to be beat, beaten up. They want to experience the power. Now, when everyone sits around and thumps the bully on the back and says, good one, you really made that kid cry, you've got a whole school in a sociopathic paradigm allowing the bully. When the entire school says, anyone who touches this kid, you have to go through me, and everyone circles around that kid, the bully backs off. So isn't the majority in a sociopathic paradigm, in a sociopathic cult that says, that's not my problem. Isn't the majority at least as responsible as the bully that kids get beat up in school because no one will support them? The mathematics would place the emphasis on the majority and their allowing. So you have this, this framework of interdependent connection points and shared responsibility. I'm not going to allow this. I'm going to go for this. There's everyone supporting each part of the circle. This is a very, very strong sh geometric shape representing a very, very strong geometric culture, um, which is not cult-based. It's mathematically based.